Many of the questions that I get from aspiring Spanish guitarists are about the nails. How long should they be? Should I use fake nails? Should I use acrylic? What should I use to protect them? How can I get them to grow fast? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So in this video, I'd like to show you some simple guidelines and what I use to take care of my own nails. First question, how long should my nails be? Now this boils down to personal preference. Personally, I like having my fingernails just with a little bit of extra length, enough to pass the fingertips. I find that if they're too long, then they start getting in the way with things like the picado or the rest stroke. It starts delaying some techniques and it just makes everything a little bit more clumsy. So you just wanted to have just enough where you feel that it's adding to the clarity of your picking and not getting in the way. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if they're too short, you'll notice that you'll get too much of an opaque or a muddy sound where the nail isn't cutting through. So in the end, it's something for you to experiment with in the early stages of your guitar journey. And even if you have been playing for a while, I do challenge you to try experimenting with another nail length. For years, I feel like I was playing with too much length in my nails and after experimenting with shorter nails and getting used to it, I found that having the longer length actually was debilitating my playing and hindering my technique. All right, question number two, how should I file my nails and maintain the length? Okay, so first thing, you wanna order some type of sandpaper that's very fine like this one. This is my favorite choice that you can order from many classical guitar websites, which I'll put a link in the description. It's made by the company 3M and it's 500 grit paper. If you can find something similar, then great. This is a perfect paper for filing your nails every day before you play. All you need is just a few minutes before you start playing to round out the nails and smooth out the edges so that you could decrease the chances of breaking a nail and get the nicest smoothest sound coming off of that nail. Sometimes your nail will lose its smoothness just from daily activities or from guitar playing so that's why you want to make sure to do this every day so that you could smooth out the edges. Also, you might not even be able to see them but there'll be like little micro cracks there that are starting and by smoothing them out you're gonna avoid any chances of cracking a nail. This helps very much with that. Something that's very important when you're filing your nail is to file it on a 45 degree angle. You don't wanna file it flat against the nail because you'll just be creating a flat wall against the nail lining. By filing it on a 45 degree angle, you'll have a nice edge for the string to slip right off. It's also a good idea to have another file that's a little bit of a sharper file for when you forget to file your nails maybe for a few days, which can happen to everybody. So something to actually take down the length a little bit faster when you're in that need. Although ideally, you're not gonna be using this too much. It's a little bit more for emergency or lazy weekends where you don't get around to filing your nail every single day. Question number three, should I use fake or acrylic nails? Now, ideally, I would say you wanna be able to use your natural nails just both for health reasons and also for the actual tone that you get on the guitar. The best tone is always gonna be with your natural nails. So if you were to ask me if I needed to use fake or acrylic nails, I would ask you first, are you playing in a loud band? Are you playing in a rumba flamenca band where you're really scratching at the nails over and over for hours? Or are you playing for dancers in loud situations as well? Um, in some of those situations, you might need a little reinforcement from a little acrylic, depending on what type of nails you have and how your health is with your nails. The problem for many people using acrylic nails or fake nails is that the tone may suffer a lot. Now for myself personally, when I was using acrylic nails, I would hate hearing that tinny sound that you hear when you're playing arpeggios or picado or other subtle techniques. Now when you're just banging away at some rhythm, you can't notice as much. Now this was my personal experience and from what I've heard from a few other players. So I don't wanna judge every player. Some people might have found the loophole around that. The second problem is your nail's health. Now, by having those acrylics covering up your nail the whole time constantly for months or for years, when you actually take off those acrylics, your nail will actually be a little bit more fragile and a little bit more thin and delicate, so they'll break even easier than they were before. Now, one alternative that I found around this is using a little bit of nail glue just on the tips of the finger. Now, if I find that I'm gonna be playing for a lot of flamenco dance, especially in the winter time when our nails are a little bit more fragile, what I do is I take a little bit of this nail glue with the brush, and I just lightly cover up the tips of my nails. This way I could help reinforce it and protect them from cracks. And I'm not compromising the health of the nails by covering up the whole thing. I literally just cover up the top quarter, maybe even just the, part, the white part of the nail to help protect it from cracking up. Hey, real quickly, if you're enjoying the lesson and getting some value out of it, don't forget to hit the like button for me. And also if you wanna keep up with my future lessons, don't forget to hit subscribe. 
Okay, question number four. What should I do if I have a nail that cracks or it's starting to split? Now, the ideal combination for myself is using some nail glue and a little acrylic powder. Now, this isn't the same as putting on those thick acrylic nails that aren't even meant for playing Spanish guitar. If you do your own hybrid, that is the ideal situation. What you're gonna do is you're gonna brush on some nail glue to the affected area of the nail, or ideally the whole tip, so that you have an even surface from one tip to the other side of the tip, covering up your crack. Then, while the glue is still wet really quickly, you want to dash on some of the acrylic powder, just like if you're putting a little salt on it, and enough to cover it up, even it out, after that, you wanna cover it up with another layer of the glue, one or two more layers of the glue to make a little thin cap. This way you have a nice little thin cap of protection, which isn't detrimental to the tone, and, uh, and it, it's not too unhealthy as well. That will hopefully save that crack and not let it get larger, but ideally, I don't even like to use that too often. That's just for emergencies. On a side note, something that I've seen with some classical players when they break nails or they, they need a nail reinforcement is I've seen that they cut pieces out from ping pong balls. They have this huge white piece on their nail. Personally, to myself, I have no idea how that could feel comfortable, how you could get a decent tone out of that. And at some point, I know tone is more important than aesthetics, but at some point, Aesthetics do count, so I just think it's a little weird to have some of that uh, a big white nail hanging around, but to each their own. All right, question number five. Should I leave my nails round or should I edge off one of the sides and angle them? Now, a lot of classical guitar players like to angle off one side. Personally, myself, I like to keep them nice and round, and what I do is I just make sure that each of the corners are very rounded off and the edges are taken off so that you don't have any snags when you're playing. All right, guys, this has been a rundown of my fingernail maintenance. I hope it helped. I hope it answered all your questions. And just keep in mind that different people have different preferences, so one answer does not fit everyone, but this is a great guideline to start with. All right, guys, see you in the next video.